Do not be alarmed. The foreboding 8-bit sounds you're hearing now are what welcomed gamers to the world of Metroid for the first time in 1986. The Metroid series is a series of platformers and first-person shooters that redefine what it means to be a platformer or a first-person shooter. Instead of simply moving from left to right, and or killing everything in your path, the Metroid games are about three things. Discovery, exploration, and becoming an unstoppable goddess of death. In stark contrast to Super Mario Bros., which was released around the same time, Metroid puts you in the shoes of Samus Aran, badass bounty hunter extraordinaire, instead of a fat Italian plumber who gets hopped up on mushrooms. For me, the biggest draw to Metroid is that you're equipped with a power suit that can grant you all sorts of superhuman abilities, but the catch is that you have to find them first. They take the form of power items, like the Maru Mari we just picked up. Maru Mari, or Morph Ball, as it's referred to later in the series, allows you to roll into a ball by pressing down. This is helpful for exploring small spaces that you can't walk through normally. You can also move quickly as a ball when you're falling down long vertical shafts, which, as you'll see shortly, are a thing that happens in Metroid a lot. In addition to starting out with no powers whatsoever, you also don't even start out with a full tank of gas. You can see how much energy you have up in the upper left corner of the screen. When it reaches zero, you explode horribly. For some reason, the designers saw fit to start you out with only 30 health. So a common thing to do when you're just starting to play the game, or playing through it normally, is to pick up some extra energy by killing enemies and picking up the energy pellets they leave behind. Energy pellets come in two sizes, small and large. Unfortunately, they're completely indistinguishable on screen because they just use the same sprite. The only way to tell for sure is to pick it up and see if you gain 5 energy for a small or 20 energy for a large. Now, you might think that even 30 is a lot of energy considering that you only restore 5 for most energy pellets that you pick up. However, it's not. Enemies in this game can do a lot of damage, even these zoomers that are just kind of chilling. One reason for that is that rebound damage is a thing that happens a lot in Metroid. After being hit, you're granted a brief period of invincibility, and you're thrown backwards. Unfortunately, being thrown backwards often throws you into the very same enemy that hit you the first time because it never stops moving. It just keeps going. It's only been about three minutes, and we've already seen two giant vertical shafts. I hope you get used to it, because you're going to be seeing a lot more of them as the game goes on. In this hallway, we're going to pick up our next upgrade. But first, got to deal with these screes. Screes dive bomb you from above, and then burrow into the ground, releasing rocks that spray out in four directions. They're a deadly combination, especially when combined with Rios, which are the uh, bug-like things that dive bomb you as well, but don't explode, and the Zebs that came out of those warp pipes back there. What we just picked up was our very first missile tank. The first missile tank gives you access to missiles, which you use by pressing select, and then firing. When you press select, you turn blue, as you saw right there. Missiles are extremely powerful, and most enemies that can be hit with a missile are killed in one hit by them. There are exceptions, though, which are basically bosses and the titular Metroids. Managing your missiles is very difficult in the early goings of the game. As you can see, the blue doors that are in the game have to be opened by shooting them, but there are also other varieties of doors that have to be opened up by shooting them with missiles. Red doors, which are the basic type of missiles that need to, er, of doors that need to be unlocked by missiles, take five shots to open, which is coincidentally the same number of shots you get from one missile tank. So of course, I'm going to spend all my missiles shooting these waivers, and then hoping that I get more missiles from shooting more waivers. This does not always work, and it's a pretty bad strategy. However, missiles are extremely powerful, so once you find, you know, more than one pack of them, it's a good idea to use them whenever you absolutely, positively 
want to make sure that whatever you're firing at is dead and doesn't come flying at you in the near future. Identical rooms are also a big thing in Metroid. We'll see a lot of them as the game goes on. Normally, the game tries to distinguish them by adding hidden areas that can be accessed from them, and making you think, well, there can't possibly be anything there, they wouldn't copy and paste a room and just change the breakability of one tile in it. That would be nonsense. This item is an absolute godsend. This is an energy tank. As you can see, it gets, lights up a little square up in the top of the screen, and that represents an extra 100 units of energy that you can carry. So now I have 199 units of energy. In this game, you can carry up to 6 energy tanks, though there are 8 total in the game. Even if you pick up an energy tank while you already carry 6, you'll still be healed fully. And really, that's the biggest draw of energy tanks, especially if you're trying to play the game quickly. That's also a thing in Metroid. People like to just zoom through it like it's nothing. So if, for example, I was trying to complete the game as quickly as possible, I wouldn't have bothered to pick up any energy in the early goings. I would have just waited until I got that E-Tank and played well. The change in music indicates that we've entered a chamber that leads to another important power-up. Of course, these zoomers are making it difficult to get there. These types of chambers are guarded by red doors, so that's why it was important to make sure that we got our missiles back up to 5 before getting here. Get used to that little jingle. You're going to be hearing it every time we pick up an item, and it's totally awesome. I can't resist trying out the cool new toy I got, which is the bombs. To use the bomb, you roll into the Morph Ball, and fire. Bombs can do all sorts of things. Not only do they kill the hell out of anything they hit, they also bounce you upwards, which is useful in moving around and doing some neat tricks that I'll try to show off later. One thing that drives me batty when I watch other people play Metroid is that I don't think they really use all of Samus' powers to the best of their ability. When I say that the purpose of the game is to become a goddess of death, I mean it. Practically everything you can do can kill something in one way or the other, and the bombs are no exception. Not even flying enemies are safe. Because most of them have to come down to hit you anyways, and that's when you get them. Bombs are also useful when you run into enemies on small vertical platforms, like the one I just bypassed. There will be many points in the future where there will be a lot of enemies coming from all directions, and also something like a zoomer on a single tile, long vertical platform that you really don't want to have to jump rope while you're dealing with the other enemies. When that's the case, it's a good idea to roll into a ball and lay some bombs. We have one more item that we need to uh, pick up in this opening leg of our journey, and that is the Long Beam. As you can see, when I fire, my shots don't really go much of anywhere. They barely get six feet in front of me. But with the Long Beam, those same shots will go across the entire screen. To get to the Long Beam, we have a lot of backtracking to do. And in fact, that's one of the knocks on the Metroid series, is that there's a lot of backtracking. Some people enjoy it. I know I do. I enjoy being stymied by some sort of natural barrier or obstacle, and finding an ability somewhere halfway across the planet that lets me progress through it. But some people don't like that. Those people are crazy, as far as I'm concerned. Now once again the music's changed, so we can tell that the upgrade is here, but I only have three missiles, and that sucks. Fortunately, the Rio was glad enough to drop a pack when I killed him. 
and after blowing up that zoomer, let's advance to the treasure chamber. Beams are granted by those little animals with orbs in their mouths. As you can see, the long beam mates things shoot farther, and it also has a deadly secret. Oh god, my legs! 